G'day everyone, Matt Elder Family Bricks here, and today we're going to review this LEGO Sonic the Hedgehog Chemical Plant Zone Level Mock and ask the question, is it any good and who does it appeal to? After Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant Zone is arguably the next recognizable level from the early Sega Sonic the Hedgehog games. This model was designed by Floki and the stud.io file is available for free on rebrickable.com. We will see how this extension joins up with the official release Sonic the Hedgehog LEGO Ideas Set 21331 that was just released January 1st, 2022. We will touch upon a few of the errors in the digital file and look at the extension I added. We will then round it out with a time lapse of the whole build. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So just take out a little Sonic and have a quick little playthrough. So you go through here, hit the speed, helps him jump up there, land on a little platform if you need to, go here, avoid the bee, try to avoid the little spiky one here, jump over that there, bounce off that, come down here, hit the Robotnik sign, and enter the level. Yay! So there are the two sets sort of side by side and then, you know, they both operate off the same sort of pin connectors. So they're just going through and connecting those together. And then you can see it all together as one display. And they've done it quite well in that the heights at the ends meet up. So it can be a flow through from the official release into fan mocks. You certainly have the aesthetic of the chemical plant zone level where you have a lot of the greys that make it up and then going through with a couple of your little enemies and things like that and also included like your little pipes that when you're playing through the game you'll get moved all around the level quickly with those. So in terms of the build experience, compare it with the actual official release and the release itself had like 1100 pieces and this has about 700. Now the main sort of difference was when you're building this because of all the little one by one tiles that went into the actual level itself, this felt really tedious to build. Whereas this, you could actually go through and it was really interesting to sort of build and you didn't have a lot of the you know, one by one tiles that you had to constantly put together. So there's still a lot of little parts in here, but the way that you go through and do it is quite interesting. It didn't feel like the other official set where it's just like, oh, another lot of checkerboard pattern. Much like the official release set, you can sort of see scaling with the figure is it's more of a display sort of piece and keeping in line with the original official release. You know, Sonic relative to the enemies and the actual build itself, you know, the scale is just kind of all over the place. But that's how it was in the actual official release. You also have some axle pins within a couple of these sections, so you can go through and reconfigure it. But when you look at it, you're going to be keeping this sort of main block together anyhow, because otherwise this is going to sort of be hanging out into the middle of nowhere. And the way that I built it was pretty much going through and doing the whole base first and then building on top of that, which I haven't had a chance to really go through and reconfigure it, but I don't think the way that some of these go together nicely allows for that modularity part, which the original release had. Not that I think that particularly matters, because with this side piece that you've got to put on here anyhow, generally you're going to set it up how you want it and build it and keep it like that in any event. And there's a nice lot of little details that they've got in here. I really like the way that they've used the tyres to do that sort of speed boost. Uh, the tiles here for the sort of toxic slime and even just sort of having this hint in here of it, you know, coming from this sort of area over there and just all the greebly little bits of details that you get into within it. And then when you look at the end sign post, the way that's been able to give that flavor for Dr. Robotnik using so few pieces is actually really cleverly done. For the most part with the instructions they're done quite well and everything seems to work. There's one or two little places where things seem a little bit askew but I think that's because this was originally designed and built all digitally and hasn't really been done physically. One place where you had gravity sort of affecting it where it didn't work was the way that they had this connected together. You had a dark bluish grey pin which would go through and allegedly hold this together but what I found is when you did it the bottom part would fall off because it didn't have adequate clutch on it. So what I've done is taken a red Technic axle pin and placed it through and then in the top to make sure that it joins together you then need to put one of these two by two and that will help hold the top to the bottom. 
and in one of the base sections is like a two by two brick which the way that the instructions have it it's sort of almost like it's sitting within another brick so it's just a matter of jiggling things a little bit there and then one or two other little places one of these grill pieces floating so i think i've just left it floating there but if you put another one by one in there it should work fine one little addition i did to the set was the actual tubing and hit that this wasn't in the original instructions but i just felt having played the game so much it really did need this because that's a big part of the level so to achieve the effect it's pretty straightforward rather than having tiles all the way across just put in a couple of these little clear bricks here and then just on the bottom here just have some axle uh, technic bricks and just a one by two pin black in this case which goes into there you know some clear two by two round ones up the top it's just a matter of having some brackets to be able to join this sort of direction coming in here with that direction there and then this is just uh, another bracket there and then the other side it's not symmetrical so you have another little bracket which pops up there and then this one sort of sits down on the top coming down through there so relatively straightforward so with the way that these instructions are presented on rebrickable it's for free and they just give you the actual studio model so i've gone through the studio model and then broken it down into all the different steps and there'll be some instructions on my website mattelder.com forward slash sonic where you can download at least the instruction pdf that i used i know there's a couple of funky steps there but if you look at the actual number of pieces for that step you should be able to figure it out and just the way that i've done it sometimes when you're trying to deal with these um, technic axles and things like that you may need to just sort of either go a step forward or back and sort of lift them up to get it to work properly so the versions of the instructions I've done are probably like you know 98 percent complete overall I think this has been really really well done it's gotten most of the key features and the colors and the enemies and everything like that the only thing may have been the little steps as you're going through which move which uh, another one version which somebody else doing one of these chemical plant levels have been able to do. You know, little tiny things which would be nice would have just been seeing some of these roll over here like they do in the game, but then, you know, I guess it's going to be a challenge in how to get that to stay upright. In terms of cost and trying to get all this together, you're looking at it being just a tad bit more expensive than the actual official release set, but then you're not getting any minifigures or anything like that, and it's just the way to go through and um, time and expense and a hassle of actually getting all the individual bits. So with that said, I think it's the sort of thing where it's great and it's going to appeal more to obviously your hardcore sort of people who want to have like an addition expansion level to their already existing Sonic. I think it's one of those things too where the idea is expanding upon the first one into a second one seems like a natural fit but then after a while it's sort of like well okay now that you've got two or three of them together okay it's a nice display piece but then what do you actually do with it beyond that so it is one of those weird ones where having now gone through and actually done the actual expansion as such and done a second level I'm a little bit indifferent as to whether or not I'd actually want to see more levels come out it'd be interesting to sort of see what the official designers and things do with it but then what you're left with is just this long display piece and I think part of the thing with these sorts of video games is all about the movement and the interactivity and things so you've had the other extreme with the Super Mario stuff where you have all those interactivity and electronic elements I think the fact that it's not based upon minifigure like this is probably hurting it but yeah of course you can then understand because of the way that the size and the batteries are you can't really do it with minifig but is there a happy halfway point in between? Don't get me wrong though, I think the fan designer who did this has done a fantastic sort of job on it and it's brilliant. And the fact they've also more or less had it up and available for free is another wonderful benefit. So kudos to them for doing that. And with some of the criticisms, I'm being really nitpicking, probably unfairly taking something that a fan does as a bit of a passion and comparing it to an officially produced set, which has, you know, the whole full weight of reviews and everything behind it. So start off by creating the long base and then going through and building each module on top of that and you can see some of the axles there starting to go in which can get a little bit tricky because then you've got to pull it up and angle it um, I really do like the way that those wheels and that build there and that little cylinder there was floating until you put the actual pieces on the roof on top of it so there are a few steps which are not exactly like your normal lego sort of builds or not quite illegal techniques but not the sequential order you'd normally do and you have these fun little details of building these little cylinders and snot on the side usually it's better to actually build them off the actual unit itself and then put them on rather than trying to build it on the unit itself
do the sign, which is cool. The B, a couple enemies. And we're done. Congratulations on reaching this far in the video. Feel free to comment or just type chemical and we'll know you've made it this far. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. A share also never goes astray. If you're interested in building your own modular Sonic the Hedgehog Green Hill Zone, check out our video here for details and free instructions. For a bit of fun, you can check out our Lego Sonic the Hedgehog short here. Otherwise, this time lapse of a Sonic the Hedgehog mural I did may be of interest. That's it from us here at Family Bricks. Thanks very much for watching. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego and lifestyle.